Hi everyone and welcome to Blending Graphics. Today's episode we're going to create Bowser from scratch. I have a 2D image of him that we're going to use here as a base and foundation to add a bunch of textures on top of it and create what Benny has now deemed the realistified version of Bowser. I think it's going to be a fun video and I hope you like it. It is a bit on the longer side so I'm not going to take too much time here with the little intro. So just go ahead and sit back, relax and let's just get right to the video. Alright, so here we are with our base image that we're going to use here, and I've already extracted him from the background, added outlines to all the different body parts, because that's going to be a huge factor for us, and we're starting out with this alligator texture that we're pretty much going to use for all of the skin here. So I'm just using my lasso tool to create a nice selection of this back leg here, and once we have that, we're just going to press Command J to make a copy of that, and we're going to start applying this starting with this left leg. We're going to go ahead and just turn down the opacity a little bit, and then we're going to right click on this selection here after we placed it. And we're going to start using the warp feature here to just try to fold the skin and the, the texture all along the leg here to try to create that shape of what we already have going on with the character. All right, so I'm just going to take another second here just to match this the way I want it to around the leg. And we've got that set. So I'm going to go to my outline, control or command, click on that thumbnail, and then hit the layer mask icon so we can get rid of any unwanted area. Let's turn up the opacity on this. And then what I want to do now is just using a nice soft round brush, we're just going to erase some of this edge here just to help it blend a little bit better. But this is pretty much the foundation of what we're going to be doing for most of his body here to add these textures on. All right, perfect. So we're going to do the same thing again with another texture. Repeating those same steps, just warp it, try to get it around the contour of the body. Once we have that in place, we're just going to softly erase some of these unwanted areas to help everything blend in nicely. All right, so we're going to move on to the tail of this alligator, and we're going to use the tail for this alligator, or crocodile for that matter, for Bowser's tail. So what I'm doing now is just using the puppet warp tool, place some points along the different parts of the tail here so we can manipulate it to get that nice curvilinear shape that is going to reflect and match what Bowser has right now. So something like this looks pretty good. And then let's just put it into place, try to get it aligned the way we have it in our picture here. And then we can now go to warp and just drag this down a little bit here just to be more of a manual approach here to get it into shape that we want. All right, so this will do. I went ahead and inverted the mask and we're painting this back in and I want to zoom in here by the hand just so we, to make sure we don't have that tail overlapping on the finger here. So we'll just clean this up a little bit. And then we're going to use this stock image for Bowser's belly. I think this will look perfect uh, as a nice texture for his belly. So we're just scaling this up, trying to get those scales at the right size for the proportion of the body that we want here. And I'm rotating this to try to match that same angle that we have. And then using the quick selection tool just to get a, a section of this. And once we have this, Command J to create a copy of that. And we're going to warp it into place again just to try to match the same alignment in the angle that Bowser is essentially standing in. All right, and then just as we did with the leg texture, we're going to control or command click on these different body parts, add a layer mask, and get rid of these unwanted overlapping sections of the body. And the scales look a little bit too small, or these portions of the body look a little bit too small, so we're just going to scale this up just a bit more, so that way it looks a bit better with the proportion size here. So since we're not using any additional textures for the skin, we're just going to go ahead and skip over this next part to where everything is already added on for all of his body here. So it looks something like this. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. I now want to focus on all of those bands around his arms. So what we're going to use here is a band that I got from Envato Elements and some cuffs. And we're just going to rotate this around. We're going to start with this left arm. Let's stretch this out a little bit so it matches what we have. And we're going to add a layer mask, then use this pen tool to create a selection of it. Once we have the selection, we're just going to fill that in with white so that way we bring back that texture. And now that that's visible, we're going to do one more here on the left hand. 
So let's just scale this up a little bit. You might need a control or command click on these endpoints just to get the right perspective and match what we want. And just turn this around somewhere right here. And then we're going to use the pen tool again to create a selection of that after we've added a layer mask. And then we're going to right click, make a selection, hit OK, and then fill that with white. All right, so we're going to do the same thing again with the other two bands, but we're not going to repeat this once more. We're just going to jump right over to that. All right, perfect. So now I want to create the 3D edge of a lot of these uh, cuffs here. So we're just going to first create a selection of it. And then once we have a selection, we're just going to use a gray color and then an even darker color just to add some shading around the top portions and the area that's closest to the hand and the skin. And so we're left with something that looks like this. And then the final element that we need to do for these bands are the spikes. So I've already created outlines of all of them, filled them with a white color. And then what we're doing right now is just adding some simple shading to give it that 3D effect. So I'm starting out with some just general gray lines right down the center. And then once we have this applied to all of those individual spikes, we're going to turn up the opacity bit on this and start adding a bit more shading to again, give it some more shape to these elements and so that way they don't look so 2D. So as you see here, we're starting to give it a bit more form and some shape. So we're gonna continue to do this for all of these. It's very tedious, but it needs to be done. And since this is so repetitive, we're gonna speed right through this section here. And here's our final effect with all of that shading added on there. We're going to start turning to adding some shadows on the body and start to give this a bit of shape as well. So at this point, I've already sampled a color on the texture itself and I put this into a multiply blend mode and we're just going around to different areas, basically where any skin is overlapping each other or is really close to other parts of the body. We need to add a bit of depth and some shadow and shading to that to help bring this image to life here. So with this left leg, I'm just breaking things down a bit more into detail for the rest of the body. We're going to speed that process up since it's very repetitive information and doing the same thing over and over again, just like what we did with uh, manipulating all of the texture on the skin in the first place. Now, as I'm painting these darker areas on the body, I'm thinking to myself, OK, so where does the skin start to bend and um, switch directions a little bit because that's where we need to start applying some shadows on there and darkening of the skin to make it look realistic. So right down here by the uh, the nails, uh, we're going to have some folding of the skin there to kind of give the impression that there's creases and a bit of an indentation there, especially right by the base of those nails. So at this point, you're really just kind of envisioning the contour and the shape of the body and just trying to exaggerate that to bring it to life. All right, so this is with that, um, all of the darkening of the skin. What we need to do now is add a little bit of a lighter color. So I'm using a bit of a brighter yellow and we're going to put this into an overlay blend mode. And so as we had the shadows, this is going to help us exaggerate those highlights. And I always recommend using different colors when you're doing this process. It just gives it a bit of variety and a bit more character to the body itself. All right, so the left leg is complete. Now we got to do the same thing for the rest of the body. I didn't actually want to skip over this because I still wanted to show you my workflow. So instead, we're just going to speed right through this. I'll see you in just a second.
right, and here's our final product with that. Let's go ahead and start focusing on all of his claws that he's got. We're gonna use this skull texture uh, for all of his claws. And what I've already done was create selections for every single one of these. And we're gonna control or command click on each of these thumbnails, add the layer mask on there so that way the texture is confined to just that specific claw. And then once we've applied that to all of the claws, we're gonna start adding the shaping with a darker color just to give it that 3D feel. And we also skip forward adding the shaping of the bands as well. So I just wanted to point that out. So you may have seen that touched up too. All right, so we're just gonna do this for the rest of the nails. And then we're gonna get something that looks a little bit like this. All right, so his body is looking really good. We're gonna start moving up towards his face and we'll start working on the mouth. So once we start working on the mouth, I'm using this 2D image here as a reference point, just to kind of give me an idea of how I wanna have the shaping for the shadows along his mouth area. So we're doing the same thing like we did for the rest of this body, just using a bit of a darker tone and working around some of these areas of the mouth. But because it is very repetitive, we're just gonna go ahead and skip over this section and just get to the point where we can start adding some textures to this area. All right, so with this rhino stock image that I have here, we're gonna do the same thing like what we did with the crocodile, use the lasso tool to just create a little bit of a section just along the side here. Once we have that in place, we're gonna command J to create a copy of that. And then I'm using this levels adjustment just to create a bit more contrast, darken it up a little bit. And then once I have that, I'm gonna create a couple of copies to use for the mouth area. And we're gonna slide this to the right uh, layer lower the opacity so we can see what we're doing here, just align it to how I see fit with the mouth. All right, so somewhere right around here is gonna be perfect for us. Once we have that in place, hit that check mark, clip it below, and then we're actually gonna go ahead and put this into a soft light blend mode. I kind of like the look of that. And then as before, Let's just erase those unwanted edges and help blend things in nicely. All right, this tongue is absolutely perfect for what we need for this character. So once we have a copy of this, what we're gonna do is just as before, we're just gonna get this to the right size that we want it, scale it down a little bit, make sure that it's in the right placement first and foremost. And once we have that in place, we'll scale down just a bit more and then use our warp feature here just to kind of bend and stretch those outer areas to fill up more of that mouth. All right, so the tongue is obviously too bright, so we're using this exposure adjustment layer to drop those lighting levels, and then using this color balance adjustment layer to find the right tone that we want. And then on a new layer on top, we're just gonna manually paint in some more shadows to give it a bit more dimension. All right, so the next step is starting to work on the top of his head. We're gonna start with those shadows, give it the dimension that we're looking for. So we're starting with the eyeballs first and kind of around this area. And then just the middle of the forehead here, right behind the eyebrows, we need to add a bit of shadow too. And on the back of his head, obviously because it's starting to bend backwards, so that's where we need to have some darkening of the skin. All right, so we're gonna go back to our alligator friend here, and we're gonna use this texture here for the forehead. So we need to first warp it into place, find out how we want to have this first, and then just like what we did with the mouth, we're gonna go ahead and put this into a soft light blend mode. I think it looks really good in, especially the look that I'm going for. So when I think of Bowser, I definitely think of something that's you know very reptilian, like a dragon or a lizard, uh, the crocodile, so kind of a combination of all of those different animals. And so that's why I've decided to go ahead and use these kinds of textures for his body. I think it's a good fit for him. All right, so we have just a couple more. We're gonna add this one on the right side of the face. And once we've put this into a soft light blend mode, erase those unwanted edges that we don't want. And then lastly, we're gonna do one just right in the middle in between his eyes. This will be the final piece that we need. Okay, he's looking really cool. We're gonna start working on these eyes and start giving these a bit of life. So we first need to go ahead and give it some shaping so it's not very flat. And we're gonna do the same thing with the left eye here, making sure we fit under that eyebrow. 
kind of give it a bit of a sunken look, but not too dark that you kind of lose the intensity that we want to have. And now that we have that, we're using this eyeball here and we're just going to create a selection of this first. And then once we have that in place, what I want to do is use the hue and saturation adjustment layer. I don't really like the look of this teal or cyan color. So I want to change up the color on that itself. So in colorize, let's shift this all the way to red. I like the look of that as a foundation first. And then we're going to highlight both of these, create a copy to send to the left side. and. Sometimes finding the right placement for these eyes can be a bit challenging, so I would take my time with that. The red's not doing it for me, so I'm going to shift it to something a bit more orange to match his hair. And what we can also do is play around with some of these colors in blend mode. So right now we're working with the color dodge blend mode, and this is actually going to help um, them pop and stand out just a bit more. So feel free to play around with some of these colors, use different blend modes, and uh, experiment with this because... That's what I do half the time, just to find the right look that I'm going for. So his eyes are looking really good. This next color here, we're going to put into multiply blend mode because I just want the edges to be a bit darker. So we have more of the contrast between the white and then the bright yellow. That helps it stand out just a bit more. All right, so just one final touch on the eyes here. We're going to use a brighter tone and we're going to actually put this into an overlay blend mode in the end here. And this is just going to exaggerate those highlights even more, make them stand out and pop just what we're looking for. So let's switch this to overlay. And now we can start working with the hair. The hair is challenging for me because right now I'm just using a trackpad and I'm not, I don't have a tablet that I can use. So I managed to find this nice image here of some hair. So I'm just cutting off the right side here and we're going to start manipulating this basically to how it is on the picture. So I'm using warp after I find the right location of this to help give it that dimension and then the angle that we're looking for. All right, so we're going to do the same thing again for this middle part. So for me personally, hair is the hardest thing to work with because like I said, I'm just using a trackpad. So I have to find some texture images like this to help me out a little bit. Now, if you had a tablet, that is the way to go because you can play around with those brush settings, use some different colors and make it look really nice. So we're just about finished here with the hair. I've already added a gradient map and played around with some of those colors to find the look that I want. And then with the human saturation adjustment layer, I'm just going to switch this up just a little bit. But that's how we take care of the hair. Now we just have to do the same thing for those eyebrows. All right, so here's what that looks like. And now with his hair intact, we got to start adding some shadows to the hair. So let's start with the eyebrows first, kind of working around the creases here right by the skin. But you want to treat the hair just like you would any other part of the body. So we need to add that shaping, give it some shadows, give it some highlights, because in the end, all those little details add up to make one fine quality image. So I'm going to spend a few more seconds on this just to touch it up a little bit better and give it a bit more detail and then we can go ahead and move on. So this is pretty much going to wrap it up for his hair. We've got one final element that we need to add and that's his horns. So what we have here is this nice stock image of like this bison that we're going to use. And I'm going to use the horns on this animal here. So first we're going to use the pen tool to create a selection of this. And I'll do one for each of the horns. So I'm just taking my time to go around here and create that selection. Once we have that, we'll right click it. Um, and then we're going to make a selection, hit OK, and then Command J to make a copy of that. We're going to do the same thing for this left side. Now, when we go and make that selection, we want to make sure that we're clicking back on that original image. And so it's just kind of repeating that same process. We'll lower the opacity, use warp to kind of get this into a nice position. Now, you can also use puppet warp for this. That can also be very effective. I'm just going to stick with warp. And then we're going to create a selection of that outline, do what we did before. And then ultimately, we're going to just add some shading onto that to just kind of round things out a little bit here. 
So we're going to wrap up this left side here, do the same thing. All right, and then we want to create an outline of these bases. I'm not even sure what to properly call them, but we're just going to fill this in with a solid color, just kind of matching that same uh, salmon or red tone that we've got going on with the original image. So let's do the same thing with the left side here. And then with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, we're just switching up the tones just a little bit on this. And then using that inverse selection from the head, we're applying some shadows on here to give it that three-dimensional look. So once we kind of wrap up with these little bases here, we're going to have to do the same thing with the horns. Apply what we did earlier to his teeth, the spikes on his bands, as well as the nails. We're going to do the same thing with the horns. So we'll just take another second to fill up this left side here. And then once we finish up with the horns, we're going to start moving to the shell. Now we're almost done with this character here, so just a little bit more to go. So we're just finishing up with this horns here. And like I said, we're going to get started on the shell here in just a second. And so we've added the, the shadows. Now we're using a little bit of a lighter color to add those highlights and make those stand out just a bit more. All right, he's looking great. Let's start working with the shell. We're going to load in our first texture that we're going to use here for pretty much kind of that rim in the edge of the shell. So I found a nice bone to use. Um, and this was something I got from Envato Elements. So I'm just kind of rotating it and find the right angle that I want to work with. We'll start with the left side first. And we'll just kind of fold in these corners a little bit here. Now it's good. We'll add that layer mask in and let's do the same thing for the right side. So for this right side, it's a bit more tricky because of all the curvilinear shapes. So I'm adding my own little grid here for the warp tool. And with these anchor points that I've put on here just to manipulate this to help keep that same shape and keep the integrity of the shape of the shell. So this is going to look pretty good for us. We'll leave it right here. I need to go ahead and erase part of this selection from the uh, bands here to make sure that comes back. And then we're going to just touch up some of this area in the back arm just to make sure that the shell is not overlapping what it needs to be and just clean that up a little bit. All right, so this is looking really good. So now once we've applied the shadows and highlights, we're left with something that looks like this. All right, so let's keep moving on with the shell. This turtle here, we're going to use its shell to create our Bowser shell on the back here. So let's just line it up here somewhere like so, and then erase the unwanted areas. With the levels adjustment layer, we're going to add a bit of contrast to this. And then with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, just find that nice green tone that we want to use for our character here. All right, so this is a good tone. We'll stick with it. We're going to do the same thing like what we did with the claws and using this skull texture on every individual spike here. So something like that. And in fact, we'll just scoot this down just a little bit more like so. Perfect. Okay, so now we got to do this for the rest of the spikes, throw in some shadows and highlights. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to complete our Bowser character. And we are left with the final image like this. So if that's all you wanted to see and just how I created this character from the beginning, then you don't have to watch any further. Now, if you want to stick around for just a little bit longer, what I'm going to do here is take our character that we just constructed, build up a really cool scene and some final effects to make one awesome composite. So I highly encourage you to watch it and stick around for just a little bit longer. This last section will be a speed art, mainly just because I didn't want to stretch this video out for another 20 minutes trying to explain the process of building the scene. So if you can spare another five minutes, please join me as I create our background here. And I'll be back with you all in just a second.